In our study of circuit responses, we've studied the way RLC circuits respond to sudden changes to the circuit resulting from the opening or closing of a switch. The circuit's response to these sudden changes is known as a transient response. Up until now, we've considered only circuits with DC sources. In these cases, as voltages and currents have changed from initial values to final values, we've observed transients or relatively short-term transitional movement from one steady straight state to another steady constant state. The complete response involved the initial and final values and the transient. Now the Laplace transforms allow us to perform similar transient analysis with more complex forms of sources in more complex circuits. To facilitate the analysis under these cases, we now are going to develop two special time functions. The first one known as the step function, and then we'll go on and define the Dirac delta function. The step function mathematically models a sudden change or discontinuity in currents and voltages due to switching. For t less than zero, the step function is zero. For t greater than zero, the step function is one. So we can define it as a piecewise continuous function. It's equal to zero for t less than zero. It's equal to one for t greater than zero. And generally speaking of the discontinuity, we're going to say that it's undefined. Now we'll see under some circumstances it's useful and interesting to have the function defined at the discontinuity, and we'll address that in a later video. Now we can use college algebra styles of scaling and transformations to model delayed switching actions, larger discontinuities than, a, than one, and modeling switching something off. So for example, we have then this function, the unit step function, delayed by a seconds to model a switching event that happens not at t equals zero, but at some time t equals a later. We can model a discontinuity or a step greater than one by simply scaling the step function with a constant k. And we can also model switching off a source by reflecting the, units the unit step function about the vertical axis. Further, we can combine step functions to model momentarily closing and then reopening a switch, thus creating a pulse. So here's our unit step function. Here's a time-delayed version of the unit step function. By taking then the unit step function and subtracting the time-delayed version of it, we can create, mathematically create an expression for a window or a pulse of time. In this case, the function is 0 for t less than 0. It's 0 for t greater than some value, in this case 2. And in between, the function has a value of 1. We can use the step function to model switching other functions on and off. For example, here we have a time function f of t that's defined at, for all time as simply the value t. Here we have the unit step function. We can multiply the time function f of t times u of t, or have then t u of t, which creates this effect. For t less than 0, the unit step function is 0, so 0 times t is 0. At t equals 0, then, the unit step function turns on, and we have then t times 1, or just the function f of t equals t for t greater than 0. So this product then creates a, a, uh, a stepwise continuous function, t u of t, which is 0 for t less than 0 and equal to t for t greater than 0. Now this f of t can be any arbitrary time domain function. For example, if we let f of t equal the sine of omega t, we have then sine omega t times u of t, which would be 0 for t less than 0, once again because the unit step function is 0 for t less than 0. And for t greater than 0, we would have then just the sine of omega t. If we were to try and graph that, for t less than 0, the product sine omega t u of t would be 0. And then at t equals 0, the sine function turns on. As I mentioned before, 
Generally, we consider functions with discontinuities to be dis or to be undefined at the discontinuity. But in some cases that we'll encounter, such as determining the derivative of the step function, it's going to be useful for us to define what's happening at the origin, or u of 0. In this case, we're going to use a definition involving limits. Consider this graph here. We're going to use this to model the the discontinuity of the step function. So at some very small increment less than zero, at minus epsilon, we're going to, or for time less than that, the function is zero. For some short time period starting at negative epsilon and going on to a positive epsilon, we're going to model this time frame as a straight line that intersects this horizontal, or the vertical axis at 0.5. You'll notice that the rise, the amount we're changing, is 1. And the change in the horizontal axis is 2 epsilon. So the slope of this line is going to equal the rise 1 over 2 epsilon. The y-intercept is 0.5. And so the equation for this line is 1 over 2 epsilon t plus 0.5 for the time interval between minus epsilon and plus epsilon. Now, we apply the limiting argument to give us the value of the step function at t equals 0. We say that the limit as epsilon approaches 0. So as these small movements away from the origin get smaller and smaller, moving in, the slope, which is 1 over 2 epsilon, gets greater and greater. And in the limit as epsilon approaches 0, this line then approaches a vertical line with an infinite slope. And the length of time that it takes to transition becomes or approaches zero in that limit. And thus, this then becomes the definition of the step function at t equals zero.